Well, hello guys, welcome back. It's been, well, what it feels like for absolutely forever. Really sorry, I know that you've missed me. I know it's been very difficult. I, I hope you're still there, you're still writing, you're still doing a good job. Really sorry to everybody who's been counting on this series to help them with their IELTS writing. I became a father for a second time uh, just over two weeks ago now. I'm now the proud father of an amazing three and a half year old little boy called Nathan. So Nathan, I hope you're still in bed sleeping. And also now a little girl called Catherine, Catherine Rosalina, who was born um, just over two weeks ago at 9.22 in the morning of all times. Okay, so she came nice and early in the day. I know that a lot of people have been leaving some fantastic comments and people have been thanking us a lot in, and saying congratulations and uh, well done and you know, hopefully the you know, baby is fine. So I've passed all those messages on to my wife as well. Um, the baby, the little lady, she's doing really well. <clears throat> she's um, the centre of attention for you know, the whole household. Her older brother is absolutely amazing. We, we couldn't wish for anything better. And, uh, well, life is good and life is busy. So that's partly why it's been such a, such a long time since we last were able to broadcast. But hopefully, welcome to all those who are joining us today and for all those who catch us uh, later on the stream. It's been great. Thank you very much for tuning in, subscribing, liking, turning up, especially on a Sunday at least a Sunday here, here where I am right now, but it could be earlier or later, depending where you are. Okay. So anyway, first I want to say is really many, many thanks to all the new and returning viewers. Okay. Uh, for this channel, we had so many views, so many subscribers, really a lot of thanks, uh, a lot of love to all of you. It's been fantastic. We do try to be as regular as possible, and we have been as regular as possible until about uh, three weeks a month ago, where I had to focus on the family. Hopefully it's all okay, and you guys understand, okay. Um, your patience has been really well appreciated, and now we can, myself, my wife, and the family can kind of breathe a sigh of relief. <sighs> there you go, that's a sigh of relief. That, you know, she's here safely with us, and, uh, Life goes on, and now I'm just trying to remember how to change the nappy and uh, how to you know, sing songs and uh, all those things that we did three and a half years ago. Um, so it feels like the first time again in many ways. Okay. To introduce myself, my name is Andy, and I am a director of a company called Cambridge EAP. We're a, a private language school, actually based in Cambridge. Uh, you can come along and say hi to us if you're in Cambridge. We're on Station Road, which is just near the train station. Okay. You will find there's quite a few schools in that road as well, so make sure you choose the right one, please. Um, Cambridge AAP, as a company, we focus on the language skills that are required for students wanting to pass the IELTS test, the FCE, the CAE, CPE language tests, uh, GRE, GMAT, we do things like this. So we specialise only on the English exams, especially the English part of other exams as well such as GRE and GMAT, the English skills required there. Okay. We do a lot of academic support, so for people heading off to university, we help with research skills, we help with presentation, referencing. We do a lot of work uh, called, called ESP, which are English for specialised purposes. So we do language courses, focus on medicine and business and law and all those kind of things as well. Basically, we're hopefully we're experts in English language from everything from simple ABCs all, all the way up to very, very complex language. So you do, if you do have any problems, then don't be shy. Send us a message, send us an email, ask us, and hopefully we can help you some way. Okay. We deliver these courses face to face. So you can come into a classroom and in our classes, we have a six people maximum limit in every class to make sure that you have a good amount of time with the teachers and the teachers get to understand your problems so we can help you better. But we did deliver the same quality of courses uh, online around the world, okay? And we rely on much more than just Skype. We use a, a number of systems which have worked really effectively over the last few years and we've been developing those as well so they work better. So it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter what your problem is, if you think you can help us, 
if sorry, if you think we can help you, then give us a shout. Let us know and see what we can do. Okay. So here today, okay, here today we we go to give some help and foundation advice for the IELTS academic exam, focusing on the writing component. Okay. So far for writing task two, we've covered things. Get rid of that. Sorry. Ah, go away. Okay. So we focused on writing task two. We've covered the different kinds of questions. There are three kinds of questions. We focused on introductions for the most common kind of question, the thesis question. Uh, as some of you all know, that's the agree disagree question. We've looked at body paragraphs, what makes a good body paragraph and what makes a bad body paragraph. And that video has been really popular. So guys, keep watching and let us know if we can help you more. We've, we've spent uh, some time on conclusions. As we know that um, people find conclusions quite difficult. So writing task two conclusions, just to remind you, have to be planned before you actually do the writing. Planning is really important. So if you've missed one of those shows, then go back, watch again. Okay, they're still there, still available. They will be available for ever, as long as YouTube is going well. And certainly, if we can um, do something to help, if you've got any questions about that stuff, then just let us know. Okay. In terms of writing task one, we've done introductions okay, for all the data tasks. That's the bar chart and the line charts, the table, the pie charts. Okay. We've looked at charts of time, charts of no time, and also processes. So all of those videos are still also available. So you know, if you've got some time later, check it out. Go to our homepage. Okay, it's 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 really our home on the internet. So you're welcome. Come in anytime. Put your feet up. Have a nice drink, some food. Sit down and watch what's happening. And if you have any questions or any comments, leave them in the chat. We reply to every message that you send us. And if you think that we can do something, if you're confused or not sure, then we'll just, just let us know, okay? We're here to help you, so hopefully we can, okay? If, the, if you find any, any of this stuff useful, then just hit the like button, it looks like this, a big thumbs up, okay? Subscribe, and you'll get notifications for when we actually release, release new shows, and we will start doing this again regularly now that our little, little girl is in this world, okay? Um, and basically, well, one more thing. This happens live. So I can see there's quite a few people watching already. Okay. It's happening live. If you have any questions, join in. Just ask. Okay. Um, if it's something important, I'll put it on the screen and share it with everybody else. Okay. Um, don't be shy. I'm not going to be checking your grammar in those messages. Okay. Don't worry about this. Okay. We're focusing more on the skills. So if you find there's something you're not sure about, especially with today's topic, then you know, put a question into the chat so we can, we can talk about it. And I'll answer those either as we go through the show or at the end when we finish. Okay, so there's an incentive to hang on to the very end there. Okay, good. Um, so what about today's show? Well, you can see the screen and hopefully that's given you some ideas. A lot of people, and I mean, oh my goodness, a lot of people have been asking for this one for a long time. Uh, it's certainly been a long time coming. Hopefully, it's going to be worth the wait. It's, mysteri it's a mysterious writing task one question. We do see examples in this book and in that book, but generally speaking, there doesn't seem to be very much good help about maps. We know what maps are. We use them when we go to our friends, we travel around the country, we see them in our cars as well. You know, very, very useful things. They come up in the IELTS test sometimes, but when they come up in the arts test, they cause so many problems, so much confusion. Okay. Um, and we think, well, this is definitely worth a show. Maps, please, come on, maps. We've got to do maps. So here we are, maps. Okay. Um, you'll get, you, you can see on the screen right now, we have a picture of the world and the compass. It's not going to be something as uh, dramatic as that, unfortunately. But... As I said, these, although these map questions don't happen very often, there, there are some problems. Okay, so let's, the first thing we're going to do, I'll make sure I've got the right size pen. Okay, I see, it's good to me. Right, so th there are a number of questions. So well, let's talk about some of these questions, some of these points that come up. Okay, so problems with maps. Okay, 
So they don't happen very often. And like I said, and I'm pretty sure that those who are watching now or watching later will understand it's really hard to find exactly what do we do in a map. Yes, books give some guidelines, but they seem to focus so much on processes and bar charts and line charts. And those are very important things that the map question doesn't really occur so often. When it comes up on the test, oh, wow. A lot of people are very unhappy. And some of them are unfortunately thinking, well, maybe I should be doing the test again. Well, hopefully, after you watch this, you're going to feel much more confident. The problems, okay, well, some of the problems stem from this. Firstly, a lot of people, when they see a map, they're basically, they are unsure how to respond. They see the map, they understand, they look at the pictures, they say, okay, I know what they're looking at, but they're not sure actually how to write it. Okay, what do I write? What do I say? What vocabulary do I use? Questions, questions, questions. Okay. Also, as is important, especially if you're looking for a higher score, the uh, 6.5 to the 7s or even above 7, hopefully. Then also with things such as the, we are unsure about the structure. And the last, okay, the last common question we get, you know, we see a lot in classrooms, especially with ourselves, is the contents. Okay, so what are the contents? What should we write? What should we not write? What are the contents? Okay, right. So all of these are questions. Unsure to respond, unsure about the structure, and, and what are the contents? I mean, what do we do? How do we, what do we say? What do we not say? What, ex what is the examiner looking for? Well, when it comes to the map question, there are basically two types. So that's, I guess, at least I'm hoping, some good news because we have a bar charts and line charts and pie charts and tables, there's four types. And we have processes as well, so there's a few variations in processes. And yep, there are diagrams as well, they do occur. Okay, but with the map question, we have two types. So let's just briefly talk about those two types. Okay, I'll just leave that just there. Okay, so types. Okay, so the first type of map question that we're likely to see is one that's focused on change. And the change is likely to be, okay, from, um, from okay, let's say from, okay, so, from, uh, let's say, let's, let's call it, so, so time, time one through to, let's say, time two, okay? And maybe, just maybe, that there may be a third time. So it could be a time three here, okay? So we're talking about something changing over time. That's usually an area or some part of a countryside or maybe a city or town. And we're describing the main changes over that time. The second kind of writing task one question about maps is what we call proposals. Now proposals, they happen again from time to time. Okay. When you are basically, you're given a scenario, a situation. So this is the word scenario, and that means a situation. And you're asked to give suggestions about where something should go. So now that may sound a bit strange, but don't worry about it because in today's video, we're going to actually focus much more on the proposals one. And in a later show, maybe this week or the week, uh, this week or the week after, we're going to focus on change. Okay. But there are two types, changes and proposals. Okay. Now, roughly per year, these questions come up maybe 10 to 11% of the year. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a cold, I've got a cold as well. Ugh. Everything's happening at once for me. So these things happen about 10, 11% per year. There's every chance that your next arts test, you're not going to see it, but wouldn't it be nice to know how to do these? So that's why we're doing it today. Okay. Proposals is actually the best one to start with. We do this in class a lot. Okay. But we're going to just go through both kinds with you and actually show you, you know, what, what are the main points? What are the key points of a writing task? like this, okay. So first thing we're going to look at is changes, where we've got, we've got time one to time two to time three, how things change over time, okay. And for that, we're going to look at, just zoom out, okay, at a question. So this is the question here, okay. Let's get it lined up, okay. So some of you may have seen this. This is actually one of the IELTS writings from the Cambridge books, okay. And just make it a bit larger for those on smaller screens. I know that some of you like watching on iPhones and tablets and stuff like this. So hopefully that will help a bit. 
So we have uh, two. We have some parts of this. We know it's a writing task one, and again, with every writing task one, it doesn't matter what it is, you're still given 20 minutes to do it. Okay. So we have the situation, and this is the first part. I'll just label the situation, which is up here, and also the instructions. So instructions and my spelling is a bit weird. Okay. Just there. Okay. Now, those instructions have actually, as this is a slightly older writing task one, those instructions have actually changed, but they're pretty much the same as the instructions you see nowadays, okay? We are told this is Chorley Wood, and it's a village near London, and the population has increased steadily since the middle of the 19th century. And the map below shows this development of the village, okay? Now, like this, the way we see it right now is a little bit confusing. Okay, because we see everything's put together. We're told it's between 1868 and 1994. And if we look further down here, we're actually given much more detail. You know, we are told that you know, we have started, starts in 1868, and then we have, so this is our first time period, this is our second time period, this is our third time period, and our fourth time period. So basically this means that we have to write something about each time period, and that's very important. Okay. You don't have to write about everything in the map, because sometimes there's a, a lot of information. But certainly, absolutely, you need to include something about each time period. So to help you understand that, I've actually, what I've done is actually broken it apart. And if we just move, move ourselves across a bit, you can see that this is the first time period. Okay. So it's the same question. And I've just removed some of the information. And right now, all we're looking at is the first time period, which is 1868 to 1883. So, you're, so you have to talk about the main roads, which are labeled here. You have to talk about a center of population here and this golf course. Okay, and that's it in the first, you know, in the first part of, of the writing. And then if we move across to the next time period, you see that things begin to change. And these are shown in blue. So okay, let's give us a blue color. So now we have a railway station, and we are looking at the time period between 1883 and 1992. So this is our second time period. Okay. We have, so the main roads and this first center of population already exists. But now we have a train station, and we have a new population center just there. So we have to talk about how it's changed from, from first to the second time period. And moving on again to the third time period, Okay, which is shown here in green. Okay, just gives give us a green color. Okay, so this is our third time period. This is 1922 through to 1970. Okay, so that's our third time period. Okay, so now we have these two things here. We have more population here and more population there. Okay, so we have to talk about those areas being established. Okay, but there's nothing else that's in that particular time period. And in the final time period for this particular writing task one, again, time, time is changing, okay, shown here in yellow. I'll give orange, make it easier to see. Okay. You can see, so this is, our, this is our third time period up there, this is our fourth one. We are told that we now have a motorway and all of this area here, this is all new. So essentially, for each time period, we, we actually write something. We write a, how something went from the first to the second to the third to the fourth. Okay, and each of these would be would appear inside a paragraph, but organization organization may change. But like I said, we're actually going to cover this kind of writing task one in a, another video a bit later in the course. So don't worry about it if you're not sure. Okay. However, for these particular kinds of writing task ones, okay. So just let's just go back to the first one. Go back in time. It's almost like Doctor Who. If you know what Doctor Who is, of course, in uh, you know the UK. Okay, great TV show. Okay, love it, love it, love it. Okay, so what kind of th okay, so what kind of things uh, for these kind? What kinds of language? What kind of things do you need to show for these writing tasks once? Okay, well, you'll need to know about these things. So points to note. So points to note. Okay, so. First thing you're going to need for this kind of writing task one, or the, any kind of writing task one, which is a map, okay, you need to learn about, okay, what's called prepositions, 
and phrases which mean the same thing. So prepositions could be something such as, okay, next to, next to, we could say uh, to the left, okay, uh, we could say between, okay, so all of this language matters. So these are just three examples. There's a, there's a lot of this language. So make sure that you either you've got a dictionary or you've got a, uh, a, a dictionary or an arts book, or may, you can just look online to find prepositions and phrases, and these will begin to help you. But it's really important that you know how to use them. Examiners are expecting this. And unfortunately, in the English language, there's, there's quite a few of them. Quite a few, there's a lot, I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> there's a lot of these things. So yeah, you do need to know how to use most of them, generally speaking, okay. You're also going to need to know about things such as called compass language. Now, compass language, maybe you don't use so much, okay. A compass looks like this thing, and most iPhones, most uh, tablets um, have a compass on it. And basically, it tells you where north is. So, north is here, okay. Then we have east, south, and west. So, you're going to have to learn how to use compass language. So compass language would be things such as, okay, so to the north, to the north, we could say here, so, okay, um, so to the north or in the north, okay, we could say towards, okay, there's another one, oh dear, my spelling's bad, so towards, okay, towards the, towards the southeast, towards the southeast, there's examples of language, so compass language really matters a lot, okay? So again, if you're not sure about this, then learn about it. Now, later in today's show, we're going to, I'll give you quite a few examples of compass language and preposition language, but the list is not complete. There's a lot of it, okay? We don't expect you to know everything because there's a lot to learn, but to know how to comfortably talk about different things and different locations and how to use a compass generally, it, you know, it's important if this comes up in the test, okay. And the other thing you need to know about for this kind of writing task one, okay, is, okay, the passive tense. Now, if you've seen one of the previous videos I've done on the passive tense, you know that we use them for uh, processes, okay. Well, not just a process, for maps as well. The reason was, and I'll give you examples of passive tense first. Could say this things like was changed, was changed, or could say was converted, converted so to okay, or something. Uh, let's say this something so had been moved, had been moved is another example. Now the reason why we're using the passive tense for a map question, especially these map questions with time. So these are more likely to be time, so time, uh, time maps, where, such as the one we're looking at right now on the screen, is that we see that something is changing, we see that something is being built, we see that something's being moved, but we don't necessarily know who's doing it. And that's one of the major reasons we use the passive tense, because the doer, the agent, uh, depends which grammar book you use, may not be known. So again, learn the passive tense. I would think if you've done processes already, then hopefully you know this. If you're not sure about the passive tense, go back to our video. I'm not sure which number it is. We've done quite a few now. But go back to our video now about um, processes and it will tell you about the passive tense. Okay, certainly you'll need to know this if you're talking about a map where time is changing. Okay, so this language is very, very, very important. So to review things, okay, Prepositions and phrases talking about next to, to the left, between, on the right. Okay. Uh, the compass, using that. Okay, so that we find compasses uh, in most places. I'm pretty sure if you've got an iPhone, and as I've got an iPhone here, this is my iPhone. Okay. I have just an ordinary iPhone 6. Okay. Because my hand, iPhone 6 Plus, way too big. 7 Plus, <laughs> massive. Um, anyway, so let's look at this one here. Do I have a compass? Okay, I should have a compass, yeah. Okay, so, um, okay, so, yeah. So, a compass looks like this. So, that's that's a compass. Okay, hopefully you can see that, okay. So, you know, your phones have these things, mostly. 
And also to talk about uh, the last thing we expect you to really know about is the passive tense for the grammar side of these writing task ones. Okay. So this is one example. And so this is about how an area called village, the village of Chorley would develop over time. But we do have other kinds of time-based writing task ones. So we're just going to travel across here, okay, very quickly. And let's focus on two others. So again, uh, so here we have two tasks. Okay, let's label them up. So number, number one and number two. Okay. So here, again, okay, the first task is something changing between 1950 through to today, and then today into the planned development. So planned means that something that's actually going to happen in, in the future. Okay, so it happens from time to time. So future tenses, uh, future perfect, things like this, you definitely need to know. And if you think that a, a grammar show would be useful, uh, hopefully not too boring, then send us a message, send us an email, or send whatever you want, and let us know about this, and we'll definitely think about it. because. Whether we like it or we hate it, um, grammar is a really important part of writing, especially task one and task two. Okay. Grandfather, not so much. Sorry, that's a really bad joke. I would delete that later, maybe. So that's an example. This, this one here is, um, show, this one shows the development and plans for this coastal zone of Bright Sea. A coastal zone means that it's near the water. And we can see the water just there. Okay. Another kind of writing task, no writing task, one for maps. It is called Laguna Beach. And this is an area, this is the secondary, it's, it's a seaside resort called Laguna Beach. And we've seen, okay. Uh, we see here between 1950 and 1970 and 1990. Okay, we, do, we have, okay, so we have changes again, okay. Now, although we may have three time periods, that doesn't necessarily mean three um, body paragraphs. We're going to actually talk about this in that show in the future. Okay. But again, you're going to have to use uh, preposition language and um, here, compass language, because we can see that, I'll just highlight it on the diagrams for you. We have the north, so we have north here and north there. So you have to use compass language as well. And likewise, Finally, passive tense. Okay. So these these so these happen from time to time. Okay. And like I said, they will be covered in the future. Okay. This quick message from Sarah. Hey Sarah, lovely to see you. Thank you. So thank you for saying thank you. You're welcome. Hopefully you're relaxing with something more interesting than my water. This is just cold water. Um, got any questions? Just let us know. If we can help you, then we certainly will. Okay. So hopefully you'll in, hopefully you'll enjoy the show. Right, okay, so this is, this, these, are the, these are one kind of writing task one, a map question. Okay, so things changing over time. And then, like I said, I've said a few times, I'll say it once more, don't worry, we've got you covered, we will cover this, but not in today's show. Okay, okay so I keep you wanting more, I say, Andy, I want more, I want more, I want more, please, oh gosh, give me more. Happy to give you more. Okay, so what about Okay, what about the other kind of writing task? Okay, writing task one of maps, okay. So these ones are ones we talk about time. What do we have? What other ones do we have? Well, we have these ones here. Now these are slightly different, okay, because you can see on here, and I'll just, I'll just zoom in one of the moments. Okay, so this one here. Okay, make it a bit smaller, that's it, good, right. So. Okay, that's better. Right. And give us a nice colour pen. Okay, black is good. Right, okay. So these are okay, so if you remember, these are about these are called proposals. And these are the other kind of writing task one. So with a proposal, the first thing to remember is that there's no time change. No time change. So you're not talking about things changing over time. Okay? And essentially, you are given a map, and it's usually just one map, as in the examples we're going to have a look at here. Given a map, okay, and also, okay, also you're given a, we call it a, a situation. A situation means that something is going to happen. So the situation here 
says the map below shows two possible locations for a new primary school. Okay, so it's a possible location. It hasn't happened yet. And if we look at the map, we can see that we've got location 1 here, S1, and location 2 there, S2. Okay. And, in, okay, so, and essentially what you're talking about in this writing task 1 is the benefits and the drawbacks for each location. So in this particular scenario, we are talking about a school. So is this, would the primary school be better in this location here? or in this location here, okay, S1 or S2. Normally there are two or three locations. I've never seen one before, and I don't think they exist. Okay, so expect two or three as the common type, okay? And so here we have a, okay, given a situation, and we have, so given a situation, and we have to talk about the, say, the benefits and the drawbacks for each location. And this is where we're going to focus our show today, this kind of writing task one, but not this one in particular. Okay. Um, and after we've done our benefits and drawbacks, we then are expected to give a conclusion. So, uh, so you're thinking, uh, a conclusion? Why a conclusion? Well, I will tell you why there's a conclusion, but when we get to the end. Okay, so you have to, you have to stick with me for a bit longer. This is one example. So this one here is a new primary school. We have another one just here. And this one is a Cambridge one. Some of you have probably seen this already in one of the Cambridge books. It's very common, it's out there, just everywhere. Okay. And we're told that this, the map below is the town of Garston. And this, this situation is a new supermarket. So again, it's a new supermarket. It hasn't happened yet. Okay. And you know, you need to think about this. This is something that's going to happen in the future. Okay. And we have S1. That's our first possible location. S2. That's our second possible location just there. So it's S1. They put it up. And S2 just there. And we have to talk about the benefits and the drawbacks for each location. Okay. Now, in this particular writing task, in these particular writing task ones, both the school and this one here about the um, supermarkets, there's going to be a lot, a lot of information. So the first thing to remember about this kind of writing task one is that you don't have to include all of this information. In fact, to do this in 150 to 180 words, and certainly to do this in 20 minutes, is crazy. It's too much, you can't do this. Like you can see here, the actual instructions for the writing task one. And you've seen them before for other writings, which says summarize information, selecting, reporting the main features, and make comparisons where relevant. So again, you're summarizing the main points. You're not talking about everything you see. You have to talk about S1, S2, the different locations for the projects, for the situations, but you don't have to say everything in the diagram. It's really too much. Okay, so don't, please, 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 promise me, whatever you do, you don't actually have to give yourself so much pressure to do this, okay? So much pressure to include every point, okay? So, so what about these writing task ones? Well, this is where we're going to spend our time today. Actually, we go through an example, we go through the model, we can go through some of the language you need for it, okay? And hopefully by the end, you're gonna think, Oh, okay, now I know, easy. Or maybe, oh, now I know, that's easier. One of the two is great, okay? So things we need to know about proposals, this kind of writing task one. So let's give a list, okay? Well, things you need to do, go back to our, okay, so this is our, okay, so this is our, okay, let's say our to do, to do, to do, to do, right, okay. First thing, okay, well, first thing you need to do is to say where each, each, um, each site is. Let's call it a site, each site is, okay? And uh, then you have to talk about, you know, give us a benefit, one reason, okay? So, a benefit of this location. So, a benefit of this location. 
okay? And then the next thing to do is okay, don't just say it's a good location, give a reason for it. So give a reason for this, okay? And then after this, you have to, have to also give a drawback of the same location. A drawback is something bad, a problem, based on the information that you've been given inside the diagram. So a drawback, so of okay, this location. Okay, and again, give a reason. And what we're looking at right now is actually a body paragraph. So let's call it a body a BP, a body paragraph. Okay, so what this means is that for each location you do a paragraph. So two locations, two paragraphs. Three locations, three paragraphs. Okay, but the first thing is really very, very important. You have to say where it is. So this one, say where each site is. That matters very, very much. Okay, don't forget to tell the reader where it is because that's part of the language that you're demonstrating to the examiner. Okay, and then we have these, so we have our location and then we have these two other more important bits of information. A benefit and a reason and also, let's go for red, a drawback and a reason. So what this means is that in each paragraph for this kind of writing task one, we're actually going to do, it has three parts. So label this up, okay, so that's, that's part one, and that's part two, and that's part three. So remember those, okay. Where is it? Why is it a good location? And why is it a bad location? And sometimes, if you want, you can actually change these two parts over. So you can give the drawback first and then the benefit in later in the same paragraph. Okay. And if we look on a larger scale, so if we actually look at the structure, the um, body paragraph structure for this kind of writing task one, it looks a little bit like this. So our structure for this kind of task one, very quite simple, but still important to remember. We have to give an introduction. And this introduction is one sentence. Please remember, just one sentence. Don't spend too much time on introductions. You don't get many points for it. The introduction, as in with the writing task two and the other kinds of task one, it's just to show the examiner that you understand. And it's an exercise in paraphrasing. So one sentence is really enough and no more than 20, 25 words. So let's put this down, so one sentence and maybe about 25 words, maximum. So don't go over this because you'll spend too much time. Okay, right, okay, so we give our introduction and then we talk about, um, so let's say right, site, site one, okay, and that's a body paragraph, and then site two, that's another body paragraph, and sometimes we have a, a third site, so it could be a site three, and another body paragraph. And just to, just to refresh, refresh your memory, although you can see it on the screen just above, for each one we talk about, we have a location, okay, a benefit, and a drawback. We do this for each paragraph we're writing about, okay. And to finish, it, to finish off these writing task ones, we then give a body paragraph, a body, uh, short paragraph conclusion. Okay, so get the pen a bit larger. Okay, so conclusion, that's better. So conclusion. Now, what do we do for the conclusion? Well, again, the first thing you need to understand that it's going to be one sentence. And here, in its conclusion, we essentially, we put in, I put it into quotation marks, these things here, like rabbits, quotation marks, and we make a choice. So here we're going to recommend site one or recommend site two or site three. But it's really important when you do this conclusion, you don't say I, I think, or in my opinion. When you do this recommendation, and you'll see an example in the model a bit later, we're going to be recommending a location based on the information we said before. Remember, conclusions never have new information. They always only have things we've said before. And the good news also is that there's, there's not a right choice. We could choose the first or the second or the third location. It really doesn't matter. 
but the main point here is just to um, is just to make a choice based on what we said before and that's it. Okay, the examiner doesn't mind which one we choose. As long as our reasons are clear and logical, then that's fine. Okay? So, just to review the structure. Again, the structure has three parts. So, first part is our introduction. The second part are the body paragraphs about the locations of these places. And the third part is our conclusion. Okay, and it must be a conclusion. It cannot go earlier. It must come at the very end of the writing. Okay guys, so hopefully that's okay, but the best way is to show you about this and also to help you with some of the language. Now it's important to understand for this kind of writing task one that it's not happened yet. It's something that's going to happen in the future. And because it's going to happen in the future, you need to be very careful with your language. Okay. And each location that we're writing about is an option. So it could be in the first location, it could be in the second, it could be in the third location. Okay. So when you're writing, you have to show the reader, in this case the examiner, that you know that's you show that that's the right kind of language to use. Okay. So let's let's help you with some of that language now. Okay, so so we're going to so these are some um, diagrams which I've made, hopefully you like red and blue, about the vocabulary for location. But I just want to just move the screen up here for a second and talk about okay, the language, other kinds of language. So I'll put a title, language. Now don't forget that when we finish, give me about 30 minutes or so, and all of these uh, screenshots will be available for you to download. And I'll put a link into the show notes. So you can click on it and download everything and look again and keep completely free forever. You know, you can print it out, put it on the wall or print it out and, you know, make it make a T-shirt out of it or something. OK, so guys, so everything will be available. If you miss something, don't panic. Don't worry about it too much. Okay. So let's put a title here. Just say language to use. There's, there's quite a lot of it. OK, so language to use. As I said, it hasn't happened yet. Okay, so we're talking, what we're talking about here is speculating. A spec, when we are speculating something, it's basically guessing. If we speculate, we guess. But it's not just a guess. Because speculating means that we're using some of the, we have some information to help us understand. So, in a way, it could also be almost like forecasting the weather. Okay. So, when, we, when we're speculating, we have to use, firstly, we have to use modal verbs. So modal verbs, th such things such as uh, would, or could, or might, okay, or may even, okay. So we need to use language like this, okay. And we have to use uh, what are also called. These are called ad um, they're called adverbial adverbial expressions, okay. Adverbial expressions are things such as we'll say a chance of, a chance of, I could say here, okay, possibility. So this possibility is not a verb expression, it's a noun, so we have a possibility. So I'll put in brackets, that's a noun, okay, just in case anybody asks, okay. We say that things like, I could say a, move across, say a high, a high likelihood of something, okay. Or we could say something is likely to, likely to, okay. So these adverbial expressions are very, very important, okay. Because again, it's in the future. We don't know exactly what's, what's going to happen in the future. I wish I did. Um, but in terms of this writing, we have, to say, we have to use language like this just to show the examiner that we know that we're not, not completely sure about this, okay. And... The last thing we're going to have to use is conditional language. So conditional language, okay, and uh, this one here is going to be the second condition. The second condition will be something like this, and I'll give you an example of this conditional language. So I could say so, maybe say so if, okay, if it, um, if it was built here, built here, comma, okay, so it would be, it would be like this, it would be, 
whatever, whatever the writing task one is about. Okay, so make sure you know something about the second condition because that is also going to be a part of the writing task one. You should show it and you need to keep in mind that both your writing task one, your task two, they're basically demonstrations. They're showing an examiner what you can do. So the more you can show, the better your score is going to be. Okay. As long as you practice and understand when to use this kind of language and when not to. Okay. So this is the main kind of language we're going to use. So just, just, to, just to highlight again. So we've got speculating language, these expressions of probability, and these conditions. Okay, but the biggest problem for a lot of people is about location. We're talking about, well, where is something? How do I describe its physical position in the map? Okay, so let's just move things around a bit and then we'll talk about location. So I'm just gonna move this up out of the way, just there, and look at this map here. So this is an example, okay. And so here you can see we have a compass, so north, east, south, and west, okay. And we have, it's all marked up with all these regions so that we can begin to see, you know, how different areas are labeled different things. Okay. And the first thing we're going to talk about here is location. So let's label this up location. So location. So this is vocabulary, this is location vocabulary. Vocabulary that's going to help us uh, talk about, you know, where something is. Lo vocabulary, that's better. Okay. Right. okay. Right, okay, so there's a lot of it, okay, so I'll, I'll try to get through it quickly as possible, and if it's boring, please tell me in the messages, and it's boring, and I'll just move on, that's fine, okay. So here, in this top region, we can say something such as, we could say, we can zoom in, so, so we could say at the top, uh, so at the top, okay, or we could say uh, near the top is another one, near the top, okay. Um, we could say, if we, so at the top, near the top, if we want to use the compass, okay, we could say, so in the, right, so in the northern, northern area or region, okay. Uh, we could say in the north, it's also okay. So if something's in the north, it's fine. The north is the area. For example, in the UK, if we live in the north, then basically it means northern UK, um, so places like uh, Manchester, um, Glasgow, you know, Scotland, that's all up in the north. Okay, so in the north, we can say, okay. Um, we could say, for example, in, so another one, i put it here, so in the, so in the top, so in the top area or region, okay, so of the, could we say of the map, of the city, of the town, okay. So that's the vocabulary for this part here, okay. If we look over to this side here, okay, so I'm just going to cough because I'm still a bit sick. Okay, better. No, just testing. Okay, so. What about here? Well, this is right. This is right, okay. And we could say, so things like, so in the, in the right hand, in the right hand, normally it's hyphenated, it's a dash that goes between the two. In the right hand, so area or region, okay, of the, so of the, whatever it is, of the city, of the town, okay. Of course, more space, okay. We can say on if you want to. If we say on, then the language is going to change. We could say so on the so on the right side. Okay, and we can say of the map of the city of the town if you want to. We don't have to. Okay, and because we have a compass, we have our east. We could say so so in the we could say in the east. That's fine as a that's fine as a location. Okay, or we could even say here, so in the eastern, okay, so look at, you see that uh, this we treat it, so look at, the, look at the way the language changes if you do that, okay. Okay, so, so in the east, okay, so here we say in the eastern, okay, again, so area, uh, region, okay, 
of something, so, so of, of the map. Okay, so that's the language you need there. If we look at the bottom, okay, so bottom here where south is located, then again we have other language. We could say for some sort of near the bottom. Okay, another one we could say is okay, so so in or at so in or at the bottom. And we can actually make it longer by saying so area. If we want to so area or region. Again, that's that's fine. We can use that. Okay. And again, we can say of the map, okay, of the reach of the city. Okay, it's just up to you if you want to to. We can say so in the in the southern area, that's right. So in the southern area. So of the okay. So remember this one is very important. If we say southern or northern or eastern, we must have a noun to go with it. Okay. Because southern or northern, eastern, western, that's an adjective, so we must so if we if we say in, then we must say in this area. Okay. Or we could just say in the south, if we wanted to. In the south, which we accepted by the examiners, that's really okay. And over here we have a corner. This location, just a corner. So we can say here, so in the bottom, in so here is the bottom hyphen or dash, bottom left, okay, in the bottom left corner. Okay, so in the bottom left, I could say, um, in the bottom left, I could say in the, if we're using the compass, in the southwest, in the southwestern, okay, and because this this one here, either one have to say we have to say corner, okay, or region, again, again, or area. That language is fine, okay, or we could say so in the southwest. That's really okay. That again will be accepted by the examiner. That should be fine, okay. So there's, these are examples. I've not labelled everything because you know they just repeat elsewhere. So things, so every all the corners are the same. So this is southwest, that becomes northwest. This one here is northeast, and that's southeast. Okay. So I hope you know. I'm sure you guys can figure this part out by yourself. Okay. So we have location. Now location is very very important. Okay. And in these body paragraphs, one for each location, one for each idea, or each site you need to say where it is first. So, you know, use this kind of language. That's very, very important. If we go on to the second set here, okay, so we've got blue. Okay, so we have not just, not only do we have location, but we have direction. So let's label this one up as direction and then give you some examples. So, so this, is, this is direction. Okay, so direction means that it's not exactly in a place, but it's going to somewhere. So, if that, so going, so put in here going to. So we could say, for example, again, if we look at the top of this map, let's zoom in. Okay, we could say, for example, to the north. Something is to the north or to the top. Okay. And what this means is that we're going in this direction. So we're going up here. Okay, but not specifically one point. Okay, and again with this language we can say so of the things like of the map or the region. Okay, whatever you want to say, that's really okay. Okay, or we can go to the corner up here, and we're as it says we're heading in this direction, so we can say to the northeast. So put it in brackets, so, so to the northeast, like this, okay. And again, of something, if you wanted to, okay. If we go over to this one, we can say, well, so to the east, we can say to the east, if we wanted to, okay. Or we could say to the right. Okay, that's fine, okay. Again, we have our options to say of the, whatever it is, okay. And down here, in this corner, so we're heading down in this, this kind of direction. Okay. We can say to the bottom left. 
Now, why do we have so much language for this? Well, different people are going to do this different ways. And it's nice for the examiner to see that you actually change the way you describe each location. Okay, so if they don't always just use the compass, okay, sometimes say the location of something, like it's exactly here. And sometimes you can say the direction, so it's over. If you go this way, you'll find it over there. Okay, so to the bottom left, to the southeast, east, okay, okay, right, okay. And so we have, of, of course, the extra stuff, okay. And just the final one we'll talk about, because the others are fine, you know, we did the same thing, okay. If we're heading down, going from the center, going downwards, okay, we can say, such as, so to, the, to the south, to the south, and also to the bottom, to the bottom of the map, the region, the city, whatever it is we're talking about. So, of the... Ba, ba, ba. Okay, right, okay. Okay, so... Whew, I need to have a drink. Gosh, that's, that's such hard work. You know, it's really hard being a teacher sometimes. Right, better, and I'm back. So, don't forget to review things. Okay, then we'll go back. Okay, so we need to know about speculating, like where something, what something would or could or might or may do. We need to talk about these adverbial expressions, like a chance, a, a possibility, a likelihood, something that's likely to. We need to use our conditional language, so if something, it was something. Now remember conditions, so we here we use the, this is the past simple, okay, and then here we're using a modal verb, could be would or could, and then here we're using the, it's, it's the infinitive of the verb, it never changes, because I remember the second condition, okay. We need to remember about location vocabulary, there's a lot of vocabulary here, and so I recommend you really do download these screenshots in about 30 minutes after we finish, okay. We have here direction, you know, we're going to a certain direction as well. So there's a, there's, there's a lot of language here to learn. And that's partly why the map question causes so many problems, because people often really don't have this language. I'm not going to say it's easy to learn. Um, it can be difficult. It's going to take time. So patience is, is a major part of this kind of writing task one. Now, something else to remember. Let's put it here. Okay, and I write it in very big, because it's very, very, very important. I can say the word but. Okay, but. There's a problem. And you need to remember this when you're doing this kind of map question. Okay. So, so not every map has a compass. Has a compass. Now, this means, quite simply, if you cannot see the compass, you cannot say north or south or east or west. We don't know where north is. Don't assume, and I know it seems quite nat natural, but please don't. The top of the picture may not be north. We don't know where it is. So, so not every map has a question. So if you don't know, if, so if you don't know where north is, okay, don't use this language. Don't use that language, okay? That's very important, okay? And unfortunately, sometimes that's going to happen, okay? The example we're going to look at um, doesn't have a compass, okay? But some of them do. Make sure you check before you do the writing because if you are practice a certain way but the compass is not there, then you need to quickly change, okay? Don't assume something. The writing task one, you're still reporting information, and if you're reporting it, then you cannot give your opinion, and we would argue that saying where north is here, and south is there, and east is over here, and west is over there, whatever, um, maybe it's an opinion. So please, please be careful about this, okay? So I'll put this and highlight it in red. It's a big but, it's very, very important, okay? So, and then, another exclamation mark. Actually, I'll put a few extra marks in there, just to make sure, because it does happen. And it does, unfortunately, have an effect on score. Okay. Right, guys. So, there's vocabulary, and there's a lot of it, okay? But I'm pretty sure that you want to see an actual writing task one. 
you want to see how we look at it, how we write about it, and of course the model answer that comes with it. Okay. Everybody seems to love the model answer, which is great, because I, I love model answers too. Okay. Right, so let's, let's, okay, let's look at an example. And this is the one we're going to look at today. It's a writing task one. And it says here. Okay, so let's just move it. Okay. Now, I've got to tell you just very, very quickly that the map questions you're getting, the real arts test, they're not going to be in color. Sorry. I can't do much about that. You can ask Cambridge for more money. Okay, get them to do it. Um, they're going to be black and white. For the purpose of this exercise, they, no, this is a green one. Uh, of course, it's the countryside is very green. It's part of the UK. Perhaps we don't know for sure. But, you know, unfortunately, it's going to be black and white and grey only. So, you know, just, just keep that in mind. Let's have a look at the topic. It's just here. The map below shows three, three possible locations for a leisure centre. OK, so because it's got three possible locations, we know automatically that we're going to do three body paragraphs. Remember, okay, one location for one paragraph, and one paragraph has one idea. The instructions, which again, always the same, to so summarize information, select reports, the main features, and make comparisons where relevant. So sometimes we can do comparisons here, okay. We know that it's, okay, in terms of the topic, we're told that it's, it's, it's a leisure center. So this matters because when we're talking about our benefits and we're talking about our drawbacks, we have to keep this topic in mind. Okay, it's a leisure center. Okay, so what kind of, you know, what kind of things can be good and bad for a leisure center and the area based on this topic? Okay, um, so the structure, as we do review the structure, I'll just move across a second. Okay, so just to review the structure, so we're going to have, I'll just write it here, structure, so we, okay, it's been some time since we mentioned it. So we're going to do an introduction, which you'll see in the model. Okay, you're going to have three body paragraphs, so we have so body paragraph one, body paragraph two, and body paragraph three. Okay, and that, that's the second part of our writing, okay? And we're going to have our conclusion at the end where we make a recommendation. We're gonna choose one of these locations. And as I said, there's no right answer, so you can choose any location. That's really okay, as long as you, re as long as you restate the reasons why. Remember, conclusions don't have new information. So it must be something that you said before. So I'll finish the word conclusion. Now remember that for each body paragraph, uh, highlighted, so we're going to talk about its location. Okay, we're going to talk about a benefit of this location. And we're going to talk about a drawback of this location. Okay, and for each, each of these parts, we're going to say why. Why is there a benefit? Why is a drawback? Okay, right. Okay, right. Okay, so that's the structure for it. Okay, we can see in this writing task one, and I've just mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, that there's, okay, so, go back, right. So we know that there's, so there's no compass. Okay, so we cannot use, so there's going to be here, no, so north or south, etc. Ba, ba, ba. So there's going to be none of this language. We can't use that in this writing task one. Okay. Um, when you have, whenever you get a writing task one as a map, okay, always look for, say, always look for, we, we call this landmarks. So landmarks, these are things that we can see and recognize inside the task. So here, for example, what can you see? Well, we can see a forest or maybe it's a woodland. So just highlight this woodland. Okay, given it says number one. So that's number one just there. Okay, what else can we see? We can see these things in the middle. So give this two. So these look, for me, they look like residential buildings. So I'm, I'm gonna just say that, residential buildings. If you say something else, the examiner's fine about this. 
you know, we know that different cultures, different backgrounds have different ways of seeing that. So let's say, res say residential buildings. That's number two. Okay, what else can we see? Well, we can see um, this blue thing here. So quite small, but it's, it's a river. So we've got a river. Okay, uh, what else can we see? Now, we can see here, number four, we can see factories. We're not sure what kind of factories they are, so we can't, we can't say that it's good or bad, but definitely factories. And not very beautiful ones either, so factories, okay, number four. Okay, and we also, we know where we are. Okay, we know that it's an area, so, so we know it's an area of countryside. All of these things, all of these steps matter before we do our writing. Okay. In a lot of the videos I've mentioned to people, I've, mentioned, I've asked you guys to remember to think about four steps. These four steps will be, so T, O, W, and F. Okay. And to review, okay, so T means think, O means organize, W means we write the task, and F means we fix mistakes. Okay, so everything you see now, we are actually in this thinking and organizing stage. This is really important. Okay, you need to plan this out before you write it because if you do that, then writing is hopefully is quite a quick process, quite a simple process. Okay, so we okay, so we know so we know where we are. We know the topic. It's a leisure center. We've we've got our we've got our uh, landmarks, okay. I've missed actually. I've missed a landmark here. So there's no, I've missed number. There's another one. My goodness, They're everywhere. So we have this thing. So number five, okay. So another landmark is the road. Of course, there's a road. Roads are important. Okay. So, right. So let's actually have a look. So all these, all, all of these things, okay, matter to us. Now. We don't need to use all of this visual information. Like I said a few times, maps are going to have a lot of information and our time is limited, um, the number of words is limited. So just choose the key points that are important for the points you're trying to make. But don't go crazy, don't give yourself this pressure to write everything. Okay, it's fine, it's okay. Remember, what you're doing is a summary and it, that's all it is. So as long as you catch the main points, as long as you feel the way you've written it, the way you've explained the benefits and drawbacks are logical, that's, that's really okay. We, we couldn't ask for more than this, okay? If you do that, then we love you for it, okay? So don't go crazy, talk about everything. For example, don't say that these fields are, these fields are rectangles, okay? Or they don't say that some fields are small, some fields are bigger. It doesn't matter, it really doesn't. Right, so let's actually talk about, let's actually look at the picture. So we can go along to a slightly bigger version, just here. And it's gonna load up for us in a second. Okay, and what we're going to do is talk about uh, locations A, B, C. Okay, and talk about where it is, its benefit and its drawback, okay? And we start with A, B, C. We don't do B, C, A or C, B, A or A, C, B. We start with the first one, which is, okay, which is here, which is A, that's first. We then go on to B, which is second, and C, which is third. And that's, that's the most logical way, it's the easiest way to do this. Okay, so let's look at A. What can we say about A? Well, first thing is its location. So let's talk about that, its location. And we can say that, okay, looking at it here, um, so we could say, it, so A, it's between, so we could say it's between the factories, between factories. Between the factories, uh, these things here, not very useful because the factories could be anywhere. Okay, so we have to say, it's always good to say two things about location. And we could say here, so we can, we're going to use a direction, I'm going to say to the right of the map. To the right, okay, so of the map. Okay, remember we can't say north or south, or east or west, okay. So when you give location, try to give two. It makes it easier for the person to find it, give to. Now, what about, okay, we, we, we've now said where it is. 
let's talk about a let's talk about a problem as well. It's a factory. So a drawback, the first drawback that comes to our mind is that well, it's not very attractive. Unless you like factories, unusual. Okay. But let's say this not very attractive, okay. Considering that it's a leisure center, that could be a problem. Okay. Um, what about it? And we can see not very attractive because of the factories. Okay. Um, if it was a supermarket, maybe not so important. If it was a school, we could say not so healthy. But as it's a leisure center, a place to relax, it's not very attractive. Any, what about benefits of this location? Well, I can see a couple. Okay. Firstly, if you work at the factory, then it's, it's, we could say it's easy access for the workers because they can get to the factory easily, you know, during their break time, maybe. Who knows? Okay. And also, we could say it's close to the river. So close to the river, so this would be a great place because then people can do water sports. Water sports matter because this is related to a leisure center. Okay. So we have our three things. We have our location between the factories and it's to the right of the map. Its drawback is not very attractive, it's a, it's a factory. And its benefits, you know, it's, it's, you know if, you, if you work at the factory, it's so close. And it's close to the river, so water sports. And the water sports thing I think is quite nice because then you're showing the examiner that you understand in your mind it's a leisure center that you're talking about. Okay, right. So that's, that's location number one, and that's going to form a body paragraph by itself, which you'll see later on. Okay, so that's going to be body paragraph number one. Okay, let's go on to body paragraph number two, which is you know, location B. So let's talk about location for this one. Where is it? So we've got a few choices here. We could say it's in the middle of the map, okay, which is fine. Or we could say in the middle of the residential area. So now I like this one more because we're using more of the landmarks of the vocabulary we developed from this particular task. So let's say this. So in the middle so of the let's say residential area. You could say living area if you wanted to. Residential area, okay. And like I said, always try to give two locations. So you could say to the left of the factories. To the left of the factories. Okay. Factories, okay. So that tells us a relationship between the two. It's, it's over here. Okay. So this is nice. Okay. The examiner, this will make the examiner quite happy because it shows that you're showing a relationship between the two. So I'll put a word in a relationship just to show why it's a good thing to say. Okay. Well, so what about, okay, what about this residential area? What's, what's, you know, why would it be nice? Okay. So let's talk about uh, the draw, the benefits. So the benefits here would be, okay, why is it good? Well, okay. It's, um, well, if you live in this area, we can say that local residents don't need to drive. So let's write it's local residents. Okay, local residents, they can walk. And if they walk, it means that's less car pollution, which is in, in the countryside, maybe is quite important. So less car pollution. Okay, um, any drawbacks? Well, yeah, I think there's one we need to consider carefully. The drawbacks, okay. Well, if you live there, you can walk there, it's fine. But because it's a residential area and it's a leisure center, it means that there could be a lot of traffic, a lot of cars and buses and what have you, coming from other areas. So we have traffic from other locations. Traffic from other locations. Okay, so that also, okay, is something we consider, okay. But anyway, I think that's enough. Now try to keep it short and try to keep it to the point because you have to get this done in maybe a maximum of 180 words. And when people start to understand how to do this kind of map question, it then means that people sometimes they write too much. Okay, so try and limit it to one benefit and one drawback. That's, that's probably a very good recommendation. And it's location B. 
so location B, we're going to just put a box around it, like this, okay. And this is body paragraph number two. Okay, so body paragraph one, body paragraph two. One more to do over here, which is location C. Okay, location C looks very nice, doesn't it? I'd like to go there. Okay, so, oops. Right, so let's talk about this location. Right, so it's location, okay. So we could say, okay, so in the, I'm gonna vary my language again. So in the left, left hand area, area, okay. And anything else can I say about this? Yes, I could say it's here and it's got the tree, the forest, okay, the woodlands around, okay. So I'm gonna say also surrounded by woodland. You could say a forest if you wanted to by woodland, but well, I think a forest is actually larger. A woodland is fairly common, woodland, okay. So again, we've got our, we've got our two locations. Now, what about, a, what about a benefit for this one? Well, it looks nice, doesn't it? Oh, I'd love to go here, okay. So the benefit is that it's, it, it looks, it's attractive. It's attractive because, well, it was the forest. Okay, it makes it a very pleasurable place and it suits a leisure center. So clearly that, that has to be a benefit. Okay, any drawbacks? Well, unfortunately, yes. Okay, if we have a look. Sorry guys, just coughing again. Okay, so it's a forest and we're gonna build something in a forest. So there's going to be some environmental damage. And the, I think there's going to be, maybe there's going to be two kinds of environmental damage. Okay, the first, okay, so the first kind is from the construction itself, actually building the ledger center. Okay, and we could say also ongoing pollution. So ongoing pollution means that as time goes on, uh, people start driving there and working there, you know, day after day after day, you know, it's good, the pollution is going to build up so we could say there's ongoing damage. Although maybe you'd like to say that another problem is that there's no road. There's actually no road between, you know, this third location. So they have to build a road through the forest and that could also cause environmental damage. And examiners always like to see this kind of thing. Anyway, let's move on. So this is our body paragraph three, our third location. Okay. So this is part of our thinking, this is part of our organizing, getting ready to write the whole thing. So just to review, okay, just to review again before we look at the model, body paragraph one is a location, it's between the factories, it's to the right of the map, which is over there. The drawback is, well, it's not very attractive, uh, benefits. It's great for workers to get to, and it's also close to the river. So there's water sports that we can do. Um, on to location two, the body paragraph two. It's in the middle of the residential area. It's to the left of the factories, and it's nice, showing a relationship between the two places. The benefits, uh, local residents can walk there, so less car pollution. Drawbacks, traffic from other locations. Okay, so that could be a dangerous, create danger for those who actually live there, especially children. And body paragraph three, location C. It's to the left-hand area of the map, surrounded by woodlands. Its benefit is attractive, it looks very nice. But the drawbacks, well, we're going to knock down a few trees, there's environmental damage, the construction of the leisure center, ongoing damage, like this, okay. So, let's talk about this for a second. One of the biggest problems that people have about map questions like this, once they've organized it, is the question, well, what do I write? Is it okay to write this? Well, it's fine to write it, it's okay. As long as you don't go crazy about what you write. For example, if you say that location, location A is bad because it's next to a factory, if there's an explosion, there will be many, many casualties, that sounds a little bit unusual, and so we shouldn't write this, okay? Or maybe, in location B, we say that you know, if you build something there, then maybe the building looks very ugly for people living nearby. 
again, we don't know this. So we have to use common sense. And it's hard to do this. It takes practice as well, because you maybe you need to know something about the topic. Common sense matters. But the, the only way to avoid this problem of maybe saying something very strange is once, okay, common sense, and then say why. Give a reason for it, okay? Make sure you give a reason, and then it helps the reader understand. It's, it's not a knowledge test, so don't worry too much. You say what you think, but if you give a reason why you think it, then it's much easier to understand your reasons, okay? So, say something, you explain it. That's an important rule, and it's something I've measured in, mentioned in task two, and also other parts of writing task one. If you say it, you explain it. If you don't want to explain it, don't say it, okay? So choose things that you are only confident about writing, okay? Let's, anyway, I need to say that, it's very important, because a lot of people worry about this, okay? But don't worry too much, okay? The, we don't expect you to have any type of specialist knowledge about this kind of writing. That's fine, it's okay. Okay, yes, okay, sometimes in my, cl in my classes, I meet people who want to go on to do um, uh, land development or city infrastructure management or zoning as a master's course, perhaps, which is, happens, but it's unusual. Um, for everybody else, you know, we're just normal people. So we just say how we feel, just say what we think. But as long as you can think, as long as you can explain why you think this way, the examiner will be happy. To say it in a clear and logical way. Okay. Now, so these are our reasons. So let's see how this actually goes on to a body pattern, onto our writing. So let's move across, okay. And let's look, at the, let's look at the model. So right now we are just looking at the body paragraphs. Introduction, conclusion, we'll look at in a moment, okay. So this is the paragraph. And so this is body paragraph one. And we're going to, every paragraph does three things. We talk about its position, and its drawback and its benefit. So one, two, three things. The first thing you say, you always say, is its location. So here we say, if the leisure center was located in between the factories to the right of the map at A, the site, okay, and you see they would say, if the factory was located. So here we're using our conditional language, the second condition. And then we talk, on, then we talk about the, the drawback. The site would be not be very attractive. Okay, so we said that it doesn't look, the, the factories don't look very nice. So we have our location, yep, and then our drawback, which is the part in red. Then our benefits, benefits in blue, but would be very, would be accessible to workers. Also, its proximity to the river would benefit users interested in water sports. So proximity means it's, loca it's, it's location, means location, as in it's close to something, close to. So you can see that we have three parts. We have our first part, which is its location, the second part, which is a negative, and then the third part, which is a positive, okay? And here we've written into two sentences, that's really okay. It could be three parts, it could be three sentences or two sentences. It doesn't matter as long as it's there. And we always, always start with location. Let's look on to body paragraph number two. So BP2, body paragraph two. So body paragraph two, we talk about its position, the first thing, the benefit, the second thing, and the drawback, the third thing. And these batch of our notes. Okay. And so, first thing here, location B is in the middle of a residential area to the left of the factory. So, as like I said, we talk about somewhere, we say it in two, we give its location using two expressions. And you see, then we go on to our benefit, which is the second part. It would give easier access for local residents who would produce less car pollution as they would not need to drive there. Okay, so that's our second thing, that's our benefit. And then the third thing, although one disadvantage could be problems of congestion if people from other areas use the facilities, okay? So here, okay, so we, if people use, so here you can see that 
this is part of a second condition again. So we're using words like would and could and if to show that this is not sure. We're just, we're just speculating. We're not confident about whether it's true or not. And you know, it's something that's going to happen in the future. Let's look at the, so on to the final paragraph, which is body paragraph three. Again, three things, introduction, position, drawback, and then benefit. Okay. So turning to location C in the left-hand area of the map, it would have the, so that's our location. Okay. And here you see, we only mentioned one location. But we're going to mention the second location in the next part. It would have the most attractive setting due to being surrounded by a forest. So this is also location and a benefit at the same time. <coughs> okay, so, and most attractive. So here we're using so a simple bit of comparison language as the writing task one does say, make comparisons where relevant. Okay, next sentence, so this here is the drawback, so this is number two, this is, our, this is three, okay. However, the environmental destruction resulting from the construction of the center and ongoing pollution would be major disadvantages. So, these are the drawbacks. So, each paragraph has a, a location, a benefit, and a drawback. And like I said, we don't mind what you choose, and even if you're not sure, just have a guess, have a go at it, the examiner knows that you don't have any specialist knowledge and that's fine. Just make sure you have a reason for your choices. Okay. Okay, let's move on. Right. So we've got three locations. Let's label those. A, B and C. We have to make a choice. Would you choose, you know, anybody's watching right now. Well, let me ask you, would you choose A or B or C? What do you think is the best location for the leisure center? Okay, maybe you think, it maybe you think that it's being close to A in the water sports is, is the most important thing. You know, maybe we don't care about the factories or perhaps you think closer to residents and less pollution is a better idea. Or maybe in, even in location C, tell me what, okay, do you think the forest is the best location? Okay, if you have an opinion, then type it in the chat. Let me know what you think is the best one. From the examiner's point of view, um, we don't mind. It's really okay. We, we doesn't, there's no right answer for this. Okay. But when we give our recommendation for what's the best location, A, B, or C, we have to make sure that it's not I. I think. We don't say I think, I believe, I agree, I, I, in my opinion. That kind of language we, we cannot use in this kind of writing. So... Let's choose, Let, let's show you a writing task one. Let's look at the example and let's look at the answer. What I think as Andy, the strange and unusual teacher thinks about this. So this is our model. Okay, and we have our three, we have our three parts. We have our introduction. We have our body paragraphs, section two, and we have our conclusion. Just there. Okay. Right, so we have our introduction. Let's read through it. The diagram shows a map with three potential locations for a proposed leisure center. Now, things like potential and proposed, it, that's very important because we want to show the examiner that we know it hasn't happened yet. And of course, with all introductions, we need to make sure that we don't copy. We don't, we don't copy what the question says. We then we have location A and location B and location C. So we have our three locations, the same paragraphs you've seen before. Okay. And our conclusion, just there. And like I said, a conclusion should be short. It should be one sentence only. So this is what we say for this particular writing task one. Overall, or I could say in conclusion, Building the leisure center in position B would combine the easiest access for users with low environmental impact. Okay, so that's it. So easiest, so these are things we've said before, and that's important. Conclusions never have new information. 
easiest access for users. So we've said that before in paragraph B. I believe in this example, I feel that it's a, it's a, it's a major advantage. Okay. And low environmental impact because C, for example, has environmental destruction and also ongoing pollution okay, after it's being used. So make sure that when you say something in a conclusion, okay, try to summarize the main points. So write this. So summarize, okay, summarize main points. Move across, oops, okay, main points. Um, try not to repeat the same thing again and again and again. Remember, no new information. Okay, that's a very important part about this, no new information, okay. And because the writing task one, it actually asks you, you know, to do some comparisons, try to compare the, try to compare the locations, if you can. Try to compare, okay, if you can. Okay, guys, right. Okay. Da, 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 da. Done, finished, hopefully. So hopefully the map question is not, hopefully now for those who are watching or for those who are watching later, we've got quite a few watching now as well. My goodness, so popular, so many people, ah! Oh, it's still there, okay. Um, so hopefully for those who are watching or those who watch later, this helps you understand that a map question, it doesn't have to be so difficult, okay? They don't happen very often, and I guess that's good news, or bad news, it depends. When they do happen, like I said at the beginning of this show, um, they do cause a lot of problems, which, which we understand, because they're unusual, and those books, you know, we spend a lot of money in these books, they don't really have a lot of great information about it. They need some, we need somebody to explain it to us. So this is what I've done this evening. Okay. T think about what you're doing and organize it. You don't need any special knowledge for this kind of thing. Practice the preposition language. Practice about location and direction. Practice the modal verbs that matters as well. Practice your conditions and your passive tense for the other kind of writing task one. Okay, but hopefully, you know, those, hopefully you feel much more confident about a map question. If you don't, if there's something I missed out, or if there's something, okay, um, if there's something that you think um, I've missed out or is not clear, then, you know, let me know about it. I've had one question here um, by an individual called Pota. Hopefully my pronunciation is fine. Pota has actually asked a really good question, and I think I've mentioned it once or twice. And um, so sorry I'm late. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Photo. I'm about one month late because of you know give my wife giving birth to my child. So I should give I should say apologies to you. Okay, but thank you for coming. Um, the question that they've asked is that this conclusion is it an opinion? Well, yes and no. Unfortunately, for this kind of writing task one, there's no way that you can write this without giving some kind of opinion. So we don't mind what you say, but it, think about it carefully. It must be logical. You know, hopefully you've had some experience of, you know, in your society about these places or whatever happens. So as the main point here, Potter, is to, whatever you write, make sure you explain it and try to avoid using language such as I think or in my opinion, okay? I don't think that we can ever do that kind of map, this kind of map question without giving some kind of opinion. But we have to try and make it seem as, let's just say, soft as possible. So that's why we use words like would and could and might and may, because we want to show the, right, the reader, in this case the examiner, um, we want to show them that it, you know, although it is an opinion, we are showing it may not be correct. So using those modal verbs could actually um, help soften the, soften the thing we're trying to say and make it seem more reasonable. Like I said to you guys, um, use, the, use common sense. Don't go crazy. Um, stick within the realms of reality. So 
don't mention about lasers and aliens and all these kind of weird things. I say this because sometimes we do see strange things. But use your common sense is the key point. If you can explain, Buddha, and everybody else is watching, if you can say something is benefit and give a reason and, give a, um, and say why it's a good thing, or if you say that some location is bad, and also say why you think it's, why it's bad uh, and give a reason for it, then the examiner will accept that. Okay. So don't worry too much about this one. It, it doesn't, as, a, as they write in task one, it doesn't happen often, but it happens enough. Okay. Make sure whatever you write, you can explain it. So like I said, if you can write it, so if you can explain it, then you can write it. If you can't actually explain it, if you're not confident, then change to something that you feel more confident about. We don't want amazing ideas here. We just want to have you know, simple, clear explanations and that pattern of say and explain it. Say it and explain it, okay? So, um, please, please don't worry too much about this, okay? Hopefully, hopefully it won't come up for you when you do your test, but if it does, just know that the examiner will be fine about this. It's, it'll be quite, you know, be quite, quite acceptable. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So you know, you say, um, it's stating. So it's not really a fact because we're using words. Okay. I, I type in here as well. So it, it's it's not it's it's not really a fact. Okay. Um, because we're say using what we call hedging language. Now, hedging language is things like, um, so would, uh, could, okay, might, and like this, also using a uh, condition, using, um, if we're using conditional language, then we're saying possibly, maybe. So condition, okay. So conditionals, okay, also make the, um, make the fact seem so less, okay, less, okay, strong, okay. Okay, these things um, are very important. Okay, so don't worry too much about this. Okay, um, okay, the examiners are aware of what this writing task one is and demonstrating this. Um, as long as you're not coming over too crazy, then you'll be fine. So um, we've come to the end of the math question, and, and it's been a long time coming. My apologies again to um, everybody. Sorry, my wife gave birth and. I had a choice of doing IELTS or to be a father. IELTS, father, IELTS. Okay, okay, it's not a difficult choice. But really, guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you who are watching. Okay, I've had a, a lot of people come in today. Okay, so it's been fantastic and busy. Uh, if you have any questions, then please, 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 please just ask. Leave a message in the chats, in the comments below, and we'll do our best to answer. We answer everything. Okay, hope you see that. Um, if you if you like this and hit the like button, okay, just big thumbs up. We love this. The more we see these thumbs up, the more videos we do. Okay. Also, we're kind of coming to the end of the academic writing part of our broadcast, and uh, and um, well, we've got to be thinking. Well, what do we do next? There's you know there's things like listening and reading and, and of course listening and reading maybe there's a bit more writing that you're not sure about um, speaking but if you've got any ideas you know let us know about what you think you'd like to see next on a proper channel which really takes time to go through and explain stuff okay um, we have a few ideas about what we want to do I'm not quite sure yet we still have some writing tasks writing tasks to do we have for example uh, problem solution questions are coming up. And also other kinds of map questions are happening with us as well, because I said I would do that. But there's, IELTS is a big test. Maybe there's grammar, or maybe there's coherency, cohesion. Maybe there's something else you would like to know. So if you have any suggestions, then let us know. Okay. And these are our contact details. So you can contact us, uh, contact at cambridgeeap.com. You can get us to the website. Uh, if you're in the UK, we have a telephone number. You can get us on Facebook or Twitter. You know, you know, we respond very quickly. We're always looking at these things, okay? If we don't reply back to you in time, then um, don't worry about it. I'm most likely I'm going to be changing nappies or you know, doing some feeding for my little daughter, okay? Learning about her, 
you know, she's, uh, she's amazing. You know, I'm so lucky. I've got two fantastic, fantastic children from an amazing wife. You know, I'm very, very lucky about. So I'm busy with doing that at the moment, but everything will be answered. Sooner or later, I promise you, it will all be answered. So guys, don't be frightened. You've got something to ask, just ask us. And if we can help, we'll help. Anyway, it's getting late here where I am. And you guys, I'm sure you've got something important to do on a Sunday. You know, go get some food or drink or something. Oh, go find a writing task one. Be amazing with maps. Anyway, guys, love you all very much. Take care. Keep on writing and stay tuned and look forward to seeing you soon. Take care, guys. Bye.